African horses, aside from you know carrying us through history and fighting in every single solitary war, no animal on earth has ever done for mankind what a horse has done for mankind. You know, aside from all that, the myth is that this is an unwanted horse euthanasia, and it isn't. Horse breeding is very similar to, to the puppy mills in many cases. The horses that are being slaughtered are not an excess of horses that aren't being cared for in the country. That's one of the myths. The horses that are being slaughtered are the young, fat, healthy horses because they're eating them in Europe. They're not eating old horses. They're not eating old meat. They're eating, you know, D'Artagnan here, who was saved from a feedlot. When horses go through auction, there are kill buyers at every auction. And the kill buyers are the legitimate ones are contracted and they have to fill loads going to a slaughterhouse. Those kill buyers meet their quota. They meet their quota on their trucks. If they got to steal the horses, they meet their quota. Otherwise they lose their job. They're weighed, they're tagged, they're shipped up to Canada right now. They load them on the truck like sardines. The horses have hooves. Hooves are they're very slippery. Um, the footing, they're, they're dropping manure, they're, you know, they're urinating on the floor. They are scared to death. You just cover your They're scared to death, you know, and it's horrible because they're running around trying to, you'll have stallions or mares, you'll have horses biting other horses, you'll have blind horses, you'll have pregnant horses. I don't care what they say they can't slaughter. We've yanked them out of there. We've watched them. By the time they get off the truck, what's left of them, you usually have one walking off with, you know, a leg severed half off, eyes popped out of their heads. A horse that, that took care of their little kid rider for the last 15 years. I mean, one of them got killed in the pen at the feedlot before they even loaded them up. They put them in the sand because there's one feedlot holding pen. They put them together. The horses attacked the little old Girl Scout horses and they killed one of them, I mean, right there. The most commonly slaughtered is still the eight-year-old fat quarter horse. And they're getting top dollar for the horses that they're pulling off of Craigslist out of backyards. They're splitting up families. Horses bond. They bond to people. They bond to their, you know, to other horses. The person who operates the captive bolt pistol, or stun gun, is not always able to stun the horses properly on the first shot. And the horses are, they're screaming for their people. They don't understand what's going on. They don't understand what they did to be here in the first place. And then they get loaded, if they're alive, onto the truck and brought to slaughter and unloaded in whatever pieces they have left of them. And then if it's five o'clock, you're left there. And if they think you're gonna run away in Mexico, your spine is severed and you'll lay there paralyzed. You cannot move until, you know, the next day. They load them into the chute, they cattle prod them. They're cattle prodded what's left of them. Down the chutes, into you know a box chamber and the guy stands there with you know his big i mean it's basically like a looks like a big caveman tool it's just it's a bolt and they gotta hit it and they have to and the slaughter you know the machines are designed for a cow that has no neck there's not a lot of mobility you try to catch a horse that's all over the place i mean there's documentation of horses being hit 10 times in the neck with this spike before actually hitting them in the head it doesn't kill them on impact. It's meant to stun them so that the worker can get in, you know, hoist them up and slit their throat. They're on a time frame. They must slaughter X amount of horses before five o'clock that day. They're not gonna wait for him to bleed out. There's nothing merciful about this. There's documentation all over the place. You know, horses literally being dismembered alive. They're being skinned alive. They're being dismembered alive. And the ultimate betrayal is this is an animal that work they give their entire soul to the human to work for them this was somebody's partner Thirty thousand more horses were slaughtered last year than the year before.
Well, first of all, I think anything horrible in the world that happens is because someone allowed it to happen. So that's the main reason. We're allowing our horses to go to slaughter. People are not feeling a sense of responsibility to their horses. They're breeding and buying and not feeling that they have to provide any kind of afterlife for them, so to speak, when they're done with their purposes. To pay the kill buyer, basically, you're almost paying per pound. The larger the horse, the more you're going to pay. So you're basically trying to give him more money than he's going to get for slaughtering the horse. Um, you make it worth his while. And then, you know, by the time you get done with trailering and vetting and everything, it usually costs us close to a thousand by the time they get here. But it just depends. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. The most rewarding thing, of course, is the love that they give back, you know. Unfortunately, they're treated as a livestock animal, but they really are more, much more like a companion animal. These agents for slaughterhouses will even outbid families who would have provided horses with a new home. It certainly should be stopped in a country where we don't consume horse meat. And I'm curious as to how many are going to have to die before that happens. I think that people have to really participate en masse. I mean, they really have to call their friends, get people, you know, contacting their legislators. Eventually, these bills will get passed. My sister, my sister has, uh, she was in deprivation to her brain, so she sustained cerebral palsy. Um, I actually was introduced to therapeutic riding years and years ago, because my sister's in her 50s now. And um, when we lived up island, there was a barn called... Um, Gold Coast in Old Brookville. And my family, my parents would take my sister and I would sidewalk. And she was much younger then. For her, having never walked, uh, for, for individuals that ha are physically disabled, therapeutic riding is absolutely wonderful because they experience a movement up on the horse's back that they will never experience in their life. Um, and I personally, um, benefited uh, when Russell having autism about 16 15 16 he became totally unmanageable and we had to place him in a school in Massachusetts which is quite a distance away and I as his mother said I would never ever remove my son from my home but we had no choice and um, it was one of if not the most traumatic and horrible experiences I have ever had to live through. Right at that time, a horse became available to me and came within a couple of weeks of when we placed my son. And it was the most phenomenal therapy for me. Uh, gave my mind a rest. The horse was just like a big teddy bear to hug. <laughs> when, he, when he really felt like mine, it was only for about seven or eight months, and then he passed, and it was almost like he was given to me just at the time I needed him. Um, it really got me through a very bad time. This is not an industry that Americans support, and it's time for it to end. It gets even lower over here. I can't even stand up now. I'm banging against the top of this. So you see here, you've got these holes and these openings. Horses can kick during transport. They can hang a leg up in there and break it. And five applications to open slaughterhouses in the United States are five days away from being approved. In five days, you could have an open slaughterhouse. It's critical that we pass a permanent ban on horse slaughter in this country, and we can stop the flow of American horses over the border to Mexico or to Canada. 30,000 more horses were slaughtered last year than the year before. You need to call your congressman, basically, and tell him, you know, stop the slaughter. I'm afraid he's gonna pop cowboy and I'm gonna be there. <laughs> so you need to stop the transport to slaughter. And, I mean, the whole thing could stop if you just stop it at the source. If people want to really make a difference in the life of one horse, any horse, anywhere, somewhere close to them is a rescue that they can, you know, go see the horse. Look at the horse, donate to the horse, promise this horse that until the day he dies, they're going to buy him a bale of hay a month. That would make the biggest difference right across the country.
the whole entire country would change with that 15 bucks a month to the one local rescue. The pain and the terror are absolutely unacceptable in any way, shape or form. I don't care if you like horses or not, you know, it's just, you have a moral obligation to not cause another being harm. That's just a fact of life. I completely, it's disgusting because a lot of the horses that end up at slaughterhouses, you have the owners end up selling them to auctions and then eventually slaughterhouses because they simply didn't run fast enough. They simply didn't make enough money. And I would much prefer if you can't for whatever reason, and this is for any horse owner, for whatever reason you can no longer afford your horse, you have nothing else you can possibly do with it, humanely euthanize it at least and send it to its death in a horrible, disgusting way. This is the end they meet after they did nothing but work all their lives for humans. And I just think that as humans, we have a responsibility to give these horses a happier ending than what they're getting. They're very quiet animals. They're very calming animals. There's no lies in them. A student who is high-functioning Asperger's, and um, he has come leaps and bounds. He has only been riding for two years, and he is far more advanced than some people I've had for five years at this point. And you tell him to do something, he learns it immediately. And it gives him a sense of pride because all his life he's been told, not by his mother, but by teachers and just the general public, he picks up on it. That, well, you can't do this. You can't do that. No way are you ever going to be able to do this or that. And you know what? He can get on a 1,200-pound animal and tell it what to do and get that animal over a jump. And that's his thing. And it's amazing. And no matter what, it doesn't matter if he has a cough, if he has a cold, he makes it every week for his lesson. And he looks forward to that every single week. The benefit um, for someone like Russell having autism, you know, he would just focus and follow instructions. We were not welcome in a lot of places. It was very difficult to take him anywhere. So that was the family outing on Saturdays. It was great. Um, Russell, there was a horse named Hennessy. The, the person who ran the program felt that Russell and this horse really clicked. Of course, there was a lead line in sidewalkers, so I always sidewalked. Um, I never imagined that Russell eventually would not need a lead line, would not have sidewalkers, <laughs> I'm going to cry, and would be able to maneuver around the ring zone. And she would direct him to go to letter A, go to letter E, and he would he would um, guide the horse and the horse would respond to him and um, she used to say that Hennessy loved him and I cried buckets when I saw Russell ride on his own. He would always look forward to the next but song. Slaughter is not the answer. The, the regular, I mean we give the horses Butte like we pop Advil and Butte is highly carcinogenic and if people ingest that the traces of it remain in the meat all the way, you know, packed and flown to Europe. <laughs> bon appetit, you know. Those people that are on the front line, they have to stand there and watch. And they document and they post it over and over and over. And what the hell does it take for a person to stop and say, you know what, maybe this is the wrong thing to do. That's all that I'm asking. That's all I'm asking is to see it from the horse's point of view.